guys, welcome to my channel. This is Jay from Coding with Jaybird, where I upload weekly tutorials to help build your confidence in coding. Today we're going to talk about event listeners. This is part 17 of my beginner series, JavaScript tutorial for beginners. If you haven't seen the rest, be sure to check them out. Let's get started coding for today, shall we? Here's my event listeners project folder. You can see a CSS style sheet here along with a main.js and then this event dash listeners dot HTML markup file. So within this HTML file, I have two buttons as you can see here. The first button is this pink button that I have here with an ID of greet Tim. And the second button is the green button with an ID of show message. And then just below it, I have two unordered lists. And the first list I've called it list one, and the second one is list two. Each list has three items, and we're gonna do a few things in our main.js where we're gonna be listening to an event on these list items. All right, so let's get started with our main.js. Okay, so what are event listeners? Event listeners are the most recent way of handling events in JavaScript. They can manage events with more than one function at a time. They aren't always supported in older browsers, but are still the most recommended way of handling JS events. Now, what does the event listener syntax look like? We have an element, and then we add an event listener to the element, which is a function or a method. And inside of this, we have a few things. So I'll just write this for now, and then I'll explain what I'm doing in a minute. So we'll have some event, a function name, and then a true or false Boolean value. Okay, so what are we actually doing? Well, this element here is the DOM element node that you want to target. The event in the quote is the event you want to bind to this particular node. Now, the function name, which you see here as the second argument, is the function that you want to call when this event occurs. And lastly, we have this Boolean value. Now, this sets the event flow to either true or false. And we're going to get into this in a bit more detail as we go along. So let's start with our first example where we want to do something to this pink button here, which says, say hi to Tim. Let's say I want to create a variable called greet Tim. So let greet Tim equals, and we're going to use our document dot get element by ID to grab that element node. And I'm going to capture the ID, which is called greet Tim, as you can see here. So I'll write greet Tim. Now what I want to do is I want to target this node. So I'll use the new variable I've created, greet Tim dot and I'm going to add the event listener to it called add event listener. Now inside this listener, I can put in something in quotes. Now note I'm putting in click, not on click. And that's a little different when you use add event listeners, the terminology is a bit different. So here we say click. So on the click event, we want to run some function. So let's say I wanted this function to be some function where I'm just sending an alert to the browser. So I'll say alert, and in the alert I'll say, hi Tim. Okay, so when I save this, and I come along here and I click on this pink button, I get an alert, hi Tim. Now note I only put in the first two arguments here. I've passed in the event and then the function name. And that's because this Boolean value is set to false by default. And again, we'll get to that in a bit. Okay, so let's continue with our coding here. What if I were to rewrite this function a little differently? Now you might be thinking this alert hi Tim is a function in itself. So why not write that directly here as opposed to wrapping it in a function? So let's try that. What would happen if we did that? So I'm just going to copy this line. So I'll duplicate it with a shift command D on my Mac. And what I'll do is I'll just remove this portion. So now it's no longer in a function call. And let's see what happens when I save this. So when I save it, you see it runs automatically. We haven't even done the click event. And when I hit OK and I click on it, nothing happens. 
The reason this is happening is because this alert method is not wrapped inside an anonymous function as it is in the line above. So when the browser is parsing the code, the minute it gets to this line, it runs this method. So the ideal way or the correct way to do this is the line we have above, and this is the incorrect method. Now that we've applied some event listeners to our first pink button here, let's do the same to our second button, this green button with the name of show message box. Now I've set up my HTML file to have this button with an ID of show message. And what I'd like to see happen is when a user comes along and clicks on this green button, this div is going to appear. Okay, so let's start working on our JavaScript. Let's start by targeting that green button with an ID of show message. So let message equals document dot get element by ID show message. It's time to add an event listener to this message button now. Okay, and in this event listener, I want to look for a click event. And on the click event, I want to run some function. So what we can do is we can actually have the function call here within the round parentheses, but we can have the function definition outside of this event listener. So I'm just going to say some function called display message. And just above this, I'm going to create that function. So function display message. And all I want to do is I want to have this div that I have here, which is has an ID of message div. I'm going to give this div an inner HTML of a P tag. So let's go ahead and add this document dot get element by ID. And we'll target the message div. And it's inner, oops, inner HTML will equal, and here I'll put in a p tag, my message box. Now I've already created an ID with some styling of message, oops, message box. So I'll apply it to that. And when I save this, and I come along and I click on the show message box, this nice yellow message box appears with the message, my message box, which is the message that we've written here. Perfect, it looks great. So we can see, we can actually have an anonymous function within the parentheses of the add event listener as we've done here in line seven, or we can have the function declaration outside of the event listener and then just call it here simply by its function name. And now note, I'm not putting the round brackets after this. If I put the round brackets here in line 15, the function would run right away. Okay, so let's get back to the last topic of Boolean values. As you know, I mentioned earlier that we have this true or false value that has something to do with the event flow. Well, let's talk about event flow for a bit. Since HTML elements nest inside other elements, if we click on a link, so let's say we click on this item one, it is likely that we are also clicking on its parent elements. So if we're clicking on this link, we're also likely clicking on this pink background, which is the unordered list. And of course, the link itself is the anchor tag. So when you click on the link, you're also clicking on the list item and also on the parent, which is the unordered list. Now the flow of events is really important when we have event handlers on an element and also on one of its parent or child elements. This brings us to the topic of event bubbling and capturing. Event bubbling and event capturing focus on the direction of the event flow. Okay, this is going to be our first type of event flow. If we have a list with links inside each list item, when we click on the link, the event starts at the most specific node and flows outward to the least specific one. So what I'm saying is if I click on this item one, the event would start at the link itself and then spread outward to the list item and then further outward to the unordered list. Now we achieve event bubbling by setting the event flow value to false.
Let's start with targeting our anchor tag. So I'll say let anchor one equal document dot get element by ID and we'll grab anchor one. And if we go back to our HTML, this is our anchor one. So it's actually the A tag sitting within the list item. And the first list item is called item one. And then the outer list is called list one. Let's add an event listener to this anchor. And in this event listener, we're going to listen for the click event. And when the click event runs, I'd like to run an anonymous function. We can define the function here. And the function will simply say alert. You clicked on the anchor tag one. Now after this function, so which ends right here at the curly braces, we should have another comma and then our Boolean value for the event flow. So I'm going to set this to false in the case of event bubbling. Next, what I want to do is I want to target the list item itself and then lastly the list. So let item one, which will be our first list item, equal document dot get element, oops, element by ID item one. And this item one we saw here was just the list item. Let's add an event listener to this node. So item one dot add event listener. And again, we'll listen for the click event and we'll run some anonymous function upon this click event. And then this time we'll just alert something to the browser. You clicked item one. And again, let's not forget after the function call ends, we want to pass in the Boolean value for the event flow and for event bubbling, we'll pass in false. Now our outermost would be the UL. So now let's target that list. So let list one equal document dot get element by ID. And we call list one, list one. And we want to have an event listener on this. So again, add an event listener that listens for a click event and then runs this anonymous function. And this time I just want to alert to the browser, you clicked on list one. Okay, and let's not forget, we need to pass in our Boolean value of false for event bubbling. So if I did everything correctly, which I'm hoping I did, when we click on the first anchor tag, we should get this first alert, and then we should get this second alert, and lastly, we should get this alert, because the event is starting from the center and the most specific and going outwards to the least specific. Uh-oh, I've done something wrong. Um, it seems when I click on the list item, nothing's happening. Let's ask our handy debugging duck, Tim. What have I done wrong? Um, it must be some syntax error. I'm seeing two errors here. So let's have a look. Let anchor one. Ah, there it is. The semicolon is sitting inside the parentheses. It should be outside. And when I save this, the error goes away. Fantastic. So let's reload the page and let's click on our first anchor tag. Perfect, we get you clicked on the anchor tag one, which is the most specific node. When I click OK, we get the next parent node, which is the list item, and it says you clicked on item one, which matches this. And lastly, we get you clicked on list one. Perfect, so what I've demonstrated here is the concept of event bubbling. Now event capturing is the exact opposite of event bubbling. So what is event capturing? Event capturing works in the opposite direction to bubbling. When we click on the link inside of the list item, the event starts at the least specific node and flows inwards to the most specific one. Now we achieve event capturing by setting the event flow value to true. So I've created the second unordered list to demonstrate this concept. So let's do the same thing, 
but this time let's set the event flow values to true. Now in this example, we'll see that the event starts on the list itself. So we'll see the alert for the list come up first, which is the grandparent or parent element. Then it'll flow inward to the list item element. And then lastly, more inward into the anchor tag element. We achieve event capturing by setting the event, oops, event flow value to true. Now in this example, let's start by targeting the list itself. So our second list is list two. So we'll say, let's target the second list, get element by ID of list two and store it in list two and add an event listener to this. Okay, so we'll add this event listener, which again, we'll listen for a click event and we'll run some anonymous function And this anonymous function should just output something to the browser. So we'll alert, you clicked on list two. Perfect, and let's not forget, we want to pass in our Boolean value after the function call, and we'll pass in true for event capturing. Okay, and next we're gonna target the list item itself, because we're trying to go from the least specific, which is the list, all the way down to the most specific, which is the anchor tag. We can see that the list item has an ID of item four and the anchor tag has an ID of anchor four. All right, so let item four equal document dot get element by ID. And this time we're gonna target item four. And then we'll add an event listener to this and we'll listen for a click event. And again, we'll run some anonymous function. And this anonymous function will just alert to the browser, you clicked item four. And let's not forget, we wanna pass in our event flow direction, which is true, because by default, it's set to false, which is not what we want in this example. And lastly, let's actually grab our anchor tag. So let anchor four equal document dot oops get element by ID anchor four so we've targeted that correct node or that correct element and anchor four should have an event listener which will listen for a click event and run this anonymous function on it and this last function uh, let's also do a simple alert message saying you clicked on the anchor tag four. Okay, and we're forgetting to pass in the event flow direction for our event capturing, which should be true. Okay, so let's just double check our work. Um, I see a small mistake here, line 48. This should be item four that we're targeting, not item one. So let's save this and let's see what happens in our browser. When I click on item four, we get the least specific node, which is this first list item. You clicked on list two, perfect. And when I click okay, I get you clicked item four, which is the list item itself, perfect. And lastly, we're getting you clicked on the anchor tag. So we're getting our most specific node of the anchor tag itself. Excellent. So here we've demonstrated event capturing and with our first list, we've demonstrated event bubbling. That's it for today's video on event listeners. I focused on the add event listener method for today. There is another method called the remove event listener, which I'll be covering at a later tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video tutorial on event listeners. If you have, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so I can continue to make more videos for you in the weeks to come. Until next week, keep on coding.